Ham. Ham, 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 ham. Yo, Hammer Productions, Ham on the Beat, whatever you want to call it. Write crazy bars, produce crazy music, rock Reebok, get money, work hard. Ground First Music Group, 211, all that, you know. 617 all day, Boston, Mattapan, Navy specific. I rock with everybody though. Shouts to Dorchester, Roxbury, Hyde Park, everything in between. You know, I went to um, Regis College from 2007, 2011. Most met most of my homies over there. Cats I do um, I do music with right now. 211. Most of them went to Regis as well. Right now I'm at um, Curry College, getting my MBA and all that. I mean, honestly, at first I was just I was just trying to get money. Music wasn't my first. Wasn't even my first. I guess you can say attempt at, at success. I tried I tried doing the most two things before, but yeah, man, I started like 10, 11 years old, stopped at my cousin Avi's crib, shout out to him. And um, yeah, he was um, messing with FL Studio, I think it was version three at the time, it's on version 10 now. Picked it up, just ran with it, 10 years of running. I recorded my first, my first song in like eighth grade, like 2003. And like I was tired of jacking for beats. I always do just go on, go on sound click and taking his instrumentals or listen to what was hot and write to that. And eventually, I just wanted to make original music. I said, I already know I've been making music by myself, like without education for for years. I I really don't think it's worth spending four years to learn something. Granted, it's all you can always improve, but I didn't see no sense in spending four years and investing in something I already knew. So. I went went out on a limb and do um I did business management, combined that with my music experience and that's that's a whole nother world right there. So I can um I ain't gonna mention no names, but there was there was a point in time where uh, an artist wanted me to be an in-house producer for him, and the contract was it looked at first glimpse it looked everything was kosher like this was I was like oh I was all gun ho for it but. After like looking carefully at it and looking at some wording and clauses and all that, I took it to a lawyer and the contract was, it was a shit show. <laughs> like if I signed my name on it, we would not be having this interview <laughs> right now. So, And that was just pure like, that's just business savvy. Something you gotta like, you know, you gotta take business law classes and you gotta like know the logistics and and all that. And if I didn't go to school for that shit, I would have I would rope. I would have just been a dumb nigga in the hood, sign my name on a piece of paper, got a couple dollars, and that would have been it. E Hammer Productions, I'm in the lab. My lab, of course, with my homies, Ground First Music Group, 211 to be specific. First. My boy Chills, you know Black, Stilio Black. He already know. Man. Young Tack, killing it. Chili Chase, Cam. Chase Cheese couldn't be. He had to take care of some some other prior engagements tonight. You feel me? But. I try to do at least three beats a day. Oh yeah? At least. I'm gonna give or take, you know, nigga always have a couple lazy days. But for the most part, I try to bang on three a day, man. That's it, you in shape though, you feel me? You throwing out punches, bro. You feel me three a day though? That's it, man. That's good, man. I try to keep myself right and keep myself, you know, just keep the creative creativity flowing. That's positive, that's what I How long do you usually take you to make a beat? It all depends on the beat. I make I can make a beat in five or ten minutes, and sometimes I can spend I can spend days on track. So. How about sound like 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 the make sound like nothing to think about about Frenchie or whatever? Like how you feel me? That beat, something like that, like that specific track. I was actually um what was the name of um. I just got back from Atlanta. I was at the airport and I had um, the original version. There's like three versions of that beat. There's the prototype, the okay version, and then the crazy complete version. I was at the airport when I was working on the um, the middle version and I just happened to get French's email from my bro Jay Card and he was like, yo, French is for some shit. Send him something. So I sent it over and then next thing I know, he did a track on it. I thought he was going to hear the beat 
asked to hear something else, and then you know, but he just just ran with it. That was like 20 minutes worth of work at the crib and like 15 minutes worth of work at the airport. And French was rocking with it. Mm -hmm. So, so it's all like, depends. It's, like that, see, it's, a, it's a creative process too, but when you've been doing it for so long, it's like it's like breathing, my nigga. It's second nature. Now. I I, I minded in psychology, nigga. That's just called it's called automatic process. When you do something for so long, it's like the difference between driving your car five minutes to somewhere you go every day and driving your car five minutes to somewhere you've never been. You driving to the same place you, you've been for years and years of your life. It don't even feel like you're driving. It feels like you're just in the car. You feel me? So it's just, just like breathing. Though. You don't think when you breathe. It's just, it shit just happens. Kill me, my nigga. That's pretty much a wrap. Whole team left, beats finish. And that's give you the give you the rock about real quick. Focus and motherfucking motivation. You feel me? Flow life world. came from a multitude of things. Well, our, um, our graduation gear was, <laughs> our graduation, first things first, graduation gear was 2011, take away the zero, that's 211, and everybody, well, most people know, 211 is the, um, that's police code for armed robbery, and that's just, that's just the whole concept of what we're trying to do. We're trying to steal the fucking game, you know? So, we, we got, we got a whole bunch of micro markets we're working at looking, you know, we're gonna, we're trying to take over. 211. 211. And that's and that's comprised of who again? That's me, Chili Chills, Chase Cheese, Stelio Black, Young Tat. Yeah. yeah, that that my relationship with Reebok started years and years ago with their sister company, Rockport, actually. Shout out to Rockport, my homeboy Young Ray, doing his thing over there. But yeah, basically I had a had a I guess you could say a business relationship with Rockport, won't get into it. That turned into a business relationship with Reebok and then that ton of these shits on my feet right now, so. Mm, okay. Shout out to Reebok. Yes, you can say I'm a, um, pretty much a brand ambassador for the company. I get their, they get their stuff to me, I get their stuff to the world. Mm. Working relationship. They um, they should be behind both both the What I Do mixtape and the um, Creative Differences EP, so. Definitely shout out to Reebok Classics. See y'all. Well, pretty much, like, right, right now, in terms of me individually, the tunnel vision's on. I got a um, self-produced mixtape coming out. What I do, that um, that drop. Hopefully, trying to get that out by beginning of May, mid-May. Then I got um, an EP I'm doing with my boy Kevin Freshwater. He's a, um, another producer I know. I got up with him a couple years ago. We're doing a um, uh, project called Creative Differences. Cause his his production and like is complete a complete contrast to what I'm used to like to what I'm used to producing and writing to. So we're gonna um, both those projects are gonna be gonna be pretty big. So hopefully they'll both be out by um we're shooting for the entire creative differences project. That's gonna be broken down into like four segments. We're doing a trailer for like a little promo video for it to like to really get into what it's about. But that's gonna be broken down into four different projects. All should be out by we're shooting for September, but the the what I do mixtape that's that's like that's the the prize right now. That should be out within the next month. So look out for that. Mm. Like I can definitely see the the generation gap. Like a lot of the MCs that I like on the come up that I looked up to, like I was looking forward to working with. I would see emails from them and get amped. Like that wave of MCs is slowly but steadily being phased out by this this new wave of of the, the Flyboy Dizzies and the Chef Boys and the Eddie Fishers, you know, it's like there's, there's a lot of a lot of young talented cats on the come up right now. I definitely, I, I still feel the same though, man. It's just like every region has its time. Houston had its time. St. Louis had its time. New Orleans had its time. New York, Cali, of course. You know, Boston just gotta. We just gotta keep keep working hard until until we create that micro market and then. Look at look what Chief Keith did for for Chicago, right? Like he, like it's probably commercially, it's not really like you can't really see it yet. 
but like if you go on YouTube, there's like a bunch of directors and producers that Chief Keep works with that they're like they're in demand now. They're getting they're getting tens of thousands of YouTube views, and he like literally established a new market for music in Chicago, and that's like I think within like three or four months, like four or five dudes from Chicago got signed. Like that doesn't happen. All all in the same lane. I think Reese, Keith, Lil Dirk, and um, King Louie all got all got record deals around the same time just from grinding, creating the market, and waiting. Once Boston does that, I, I feel like everybody's gonna get that opportunity we're waiting on. Ham on the beat, 493 Blue Hill Live, got sold 1981, shout outs to him. My flow life, 